All right, so we've got kind of an interesting uh, new video for today. We have a friend who we've met through our GMC motorhome uh, exploits who just came across three GMC motorhomes. Um, most people would not be up for purchasing three additional GMC motorhomes. He has one that he's had for, for quite a while, but these are three new ones that he just got over the last uh, week or two. And we thought it would be kind of a cool chance to take a look at a few different types of motorhomes in various states of, um, I'll say, disrepair. So these were all fairly inexpensive. So at the, uh, <clears throat> at the low end, um, he got one of these for basically the price of a tow because it has a, a blown engine and needed to move. Um, and on the uh, other end of the spectrum, uh, probably the you know, the nicest or the uh, one with the most upgrades and things is probably worth 5000 maybe $10,000. Um, so overall, you know, kind of a, a low end of the, the GMC motorhome world, but some kind of cool um, vehicles that could be rebuilt, could be big projects, uh, could be maybe combined to make a, a great motorhome. And I uh, thought it would be cool to just check things out. All right, so this one, some very nice paint on it that's in a pretty pretty good shape. It's a Kingsley. So this is a 77 Kingsley. It has a 455 engine. And um, just looking at it, it looks pretty nice. The, the paint, I mean, obviously it's dirty. It's been stored inside and um, the windshields look nice. They're not uh, hazy or anything. It's missing a front bumper, but overall, pretty straight and has some nice upgrades like the uh, the vents on the engine here um, an awning little wing windows on the side here to deflect the air um, cb radio and things like that so overall it looks pretty nice it has the steel wheels on it and the tires of course are old so these tires would need to be replaced before it was really ready to use very much but very complete i mean it has AC units, it has the storage pod on top, um, generator, it has a quad bag system, and really in pretty nice looking shape. The big problem with this coach is, unfortunately, the engine is no good. So although the coach looks pretty good and there's a lot of potential here, it's going to take some work to replace the engine or rebuild the engine or something like that. But let's take a quick look inside. The inside of this one is really nice as far as the upholstery and things. Um, it's pretty original. So um, if you've seen our motorhome and the, uh, the Kingsley that we have, uh, this interior would look pretty familiar. So a little bit different cabinets. Somebody's done some modifications here, but the upholstery and the orange seats, the orange uh, front seats here, the dashboard, all of that is, is pretty original. Um, the interior, the ceiling, things like this, um, really in pretty good shape. Now keep in mind, this hasn't had any kind of cleanup done. Uh, this basically just came out of storage, just like this. Um, somebody was hoping to be able to, you know, kind of just drive this home. Unfortunately, the engine's no good. So um, that's kind of a, a big problem, but uh, the interior, um, you know, with some cleaning and, fixing this up, it would be in pretty nice shape. And um, really a lot of original parts in nice condition here. The refrigerator looks good. The bathroom is very nice. Uh, we can take a look. It has the original vacuum. So I don't know if the vacuum works, but this is pretty cool because in ours, this has been turned into um, a little storage pantry, um, but this one probably still has all the original vacuum parts. So pretty, uh, awesome overall. Of course, we have the Magic Chef stove here. If we go back into the back, um, I don't know if the lighting's going to be very good, but let's take a quick look in the closet here because it has some of the original orange shag carpet. So, see if we can get a little view in the mm -hmm. in the closet there. Too dark. Okay. Um, and then back in the back, very similar to ours. It has the same kind of settee uh, benches here that fold down. This one has a couple of things that we really want in ours. One of them is 
this um, blanket cabinet here. So I don't know if I can open this up, but nice little storage area for blankets or pillows or other things that you might want to kind of keep out of the way. Um, obviously the the carpet and things are, are pretty steamed up and needs some needs some work, but um, bathroom and other parts for the most part are in you know pretty decent shape. So of course there's no power on this. The batteries are dead and the engine is dead. So can't can't give a uh, a very well lit tour, but um, considering that a coach like this can come up occasionally for just a few thousand dollars, um, could be a really cool starting point for somebody who wants a very original coach. So pretty cool to see one like this. Of course, that engine project is going to be, you know, pretty costly and take some time. All right, so we've got this beautiful coach. Um, some pretty nice paint work on this. Um, you can see a little bit of damage on some of the seams and things, um, but kind of cool to see some of the original colors and stripes and things. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things with this one. So we think that this is a painted desert model. Um, kind of hard to know for sure without checking the, the VIN code and decoding it, and I haven't done that. So um, we'll, we'll just take a guess for now. But this is a pretty early, this is a 1973. And the early ones had these metal plates around the, the door latches with the cool GMC logo on here, I guess. This is the first one of these I've actually seen in person. Um, but another interesting thing, the number on this is number 234. So out of the thousands of GMCs that were built over the five years, this was in the first set and it was number 234. So kind of cool from an early GMC standpoint. Um, unfortunately, this one is in pretty rough shape. It runs and it drives. Um, it has some very nice Alcoa aluminum wheels on it. So that's kind of a, a cool thing. But other than running and driving and having nice aluminum wheels, uh, the rest of it's in pretty rough shape. So it was stored in a barn and had mm, maybe generations of mice living in it over the years. So the inside is in kind of rough shape. It doesn't smell very good. Um, probably is going to need a fair bit of interior work. Um, the exterior isn't great. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. This is, uh, you know, not something I would typically see. The, the body is fairly straight. Um, so, you know, it, definitely some potential here. But let's take a look on the inside. So we won't stay in here a long time. Kind of smelly. Um, some mothballs and things uh, still in here. Um, so uh, obviously the carpet and things are pretty stained up. You can see um, cabinets are kind of degrading a bit. Uh, the walls kind of coming apart, water damage. Um, some of these are in worse shape than others. This actually is kind of the way our, our motorhome looked when we uh, first started doing some of the wall repairs and things. Um, a lot of this is probably fairly original. I'm not sure about these, uh, these benches and things, but they look, you know, probably like they've been here a long time. Um, mechanically, it runs and drives, so that's not bad, but um, a lot of work between water damage and upholstery damage and mouse damage and all of those things that are gonna, gonna take a lot of work to, to fix. Um, there are obviously some things that can be saved in here. So, um, you know, kind of a nice cutting board over the sink. The refrigerator is actually pretty new. It's a newer Norcold refrigerator. And so that's definitely something that, that you might wanna use. Um, cabinets and, and things like that kind of falling apart. So a lot of this would need to be reconstructed. Um, the bathroom actually isn't in too bad a shape because we don't have any power or lighting in here. Can't really show that, but the door is coming apart. So, you know, bowing, delaminating, falling apart on the inside. Um, and then the back here has like a full size bed, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's not in very good shape. You can see lots of water damage, lots of the plastic falling apart and, and things. So 
This one's in pretty rough shape. Uh, this is one, although it was drivable, um, that's kind of about all it had going for it. So um, really it would take a lot of work to get this one to a point where you'd probably want to actually stay in it and take it camping and things. Um, but a coach in this kind of condition driving down the road is probably, you know, a couple thousand dollars maybe. Um, so this would be a pretty low end, very basic starting point. But if you had a lot of elbow grease and wanted to go through all the work of, of refurbishing this, um, it could be brought back. So this is, this is one that just is going to take a lot of work to get to a point where anybody would actually want to spend the night in it. All right, so we've got a, uh, a nice looking 77 Royale that we'll talk about here. Um, this one has a 403 engine, and this one is, is kind of interesting because it has basically had lots of work done to it, but as far as being ready to use, it's probably almost further away than the other ones that we looked at here because the inside has been torn down and work has begun on doing restoration, but there's still a lot more to do. Uh, interestingly, the upgrades on this um, are extensive. Uh, it just needs to all be brought back together into, into a motorhome. So um, looking at the, the angles on these windshield wipers, these are a newer style windshield wiper that gives a little better coverage across the windshield. The windshields have been replaced, so no fogging or anything. Really nice um, condition on the windshields. Little rock chip here. Um, the paint, you can see fading in things, but still pretty original and not in terrible shape. It has some body damage or some repairs that need to be done. Um, it does have aftermarket alloy, uh, aluminum alloy wheels. Um, it has, if we just kind of keep walking around the motorhome here, it has a quad bag system with shutoff valves. So pretty nice upgrade there. It has a reaction arm system underneath, which is something that our motorhome has. It helps kind of keep the, the uh, um, wheels somewhat aligned and helps with the suspension a little bit and braking. Um, it has some kind of interesting aftermarket windows that have um, bottom part that flips out and screens built in where the top part is uh, more fixed. So kind of an interesting upgrade there. Uh, if we come around to the back, this is pretty interesting. So no bumper or anything, but actually looking at the, uh, the exhaust pipe here, this has got some pretty serious uh, upgrades to the exhaust system. And they've been doing some work back here. So the window is gone and they have a wall here. So they're building a different kind of interior, but we've got a water tank down here that is getting set up and it's a brand new water tank. Over on the side, there's a brand new um, hot water heater that's all been wired and, and plumbed in and everything, um, which is kind of, kind of unusual to see, you know, some big upgrades like this. Um, and changing the floor plan and kind of building something new inside. So I suspect the back window here probably will be replaced with some kind of panel that could open up with gas struts or something to give you access to this. It could be storage and, and access to the water tank and water heater and things back here. But um, pretty, pretty interesting that somebody was in the process of doing some major overhauls on this. Um, over on this side, we've got a vent here for the hot water heater. It has a plug for shore power. And in the generator compartment, it has a brand new, not even hooked up, Cummins um, 4 kilowatt generator. So really nice brand new generator installed, um, basically ready to, to kind of get some of the final wiring done and um, be used. Um, coming along here, we've got the, the quad bag system. Um, the tires basically look brand new. Um, this is one that's been sitting for a long time. So although the, the tires have pretty much brand new tread on them, they're several, they're quite a few years old. So um, probably getting to the point where they need to be replaced just on age. Uh, you can see another one of those upgraded windows here with the kind of pop out uh, vents with screens and things on them. So lots of just really cool upgrades, like the mirrors. So this has um, very nice 
mirrors with wide angle uh, areas on them. So those are kind of a nice upgrade that some people do on these. I kind of prefer the more um, original type of mirrors, but those have very nice big visibility. Um, so lots of mechanical, lots of house system upgrades. The inside is where all the work needs to happen. So, oh, another, another one of these nice windows here with the pop-out vent. You can kind of see what that looks like from the inside. So being able to pop that open and prop it out, it's kind of, kind of cool. But in here, it's a little, little different story where the outside, you know, kind of had lots of cool upgrades. The inside is almost a blank slate. So seats are in pretty rough shape. They're falling apart. Um, the dash actually isn't too bad. I think we can put this down. Um, a little bit of damage there. It's a little bit disassembled, but you know, doesn't, doesn't look too bad, mostly original. Um, but then the rest of the coach is just about gutted. Um, started to do some work on the top here. It looks like there's, you know, maybe some nice recessed lighting here and this, this roof liner is padded, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, this looks like it's had some upgrades and is relatively new. Actually has a little plastic still over the remote control portion there. Uh, brand new refrigerator. So somebody was, you know, I don't know what kind of condition this was in when they got it, but somebody was putting a lot of money into fixing this. So the generator, probably a $5,000 generator. The wheels, a couple thousand dollars. Uh, this new bathroom module and toilet and hot water heater and water tank and all of that, probably another couple thousand dollars. Air conditioning, thousand dollars, right? So somebody was putting a lot of effort into making this really nice. They just didn't get it done. And it's a huge amount of work. So I'm not really too surprised. They've got boxes of um, additional windows to replace some of the windows that we saw that weren't um, upgraded with those new style windows yet. They've got them right here. They were going through, you know, redoing the wiring, running new Romex wiring for everything. Um, this bathroom module back here um, has a brand new toilet, a nice little toilet area, a storage cabinet, a nice big shower with a skylight exhaust fan so almost like a full-size bathroom that you normally wouldn't see in a GMC motorhome like this um, so really nice setup and somebody I think really put a lot of thought into what would make a nice kind of modern GMC motorhome but although there's you know maybe ten thousand dollars or more worth the parts and equipment and upgrades and things here it's not to a point where anybody could use it, right? If you were going to take this thing camping, although it runs and drives, you'd be sleeping in a tent in the floor here, right? <laughs> or a sleeping bag. So still a bunch of work to do. A, a, a vehicle in this kind of condition where a lot of the value comes from is all of the parts that are here that are new, that are in really good condition, um, the ceiling and things are really nice. So the work that's been done was done in a really good way, but you're going to have to put $10,000, a few thousand hours of work, um, just to kind of get to this, to the point where you'd want to go camping in it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised because of all of the upgrades and parts and things, this might sell for 5,000, 7,000, right? I mean, this is, there's definitely some value here in all of the mechanical and systems upgrades. Um, but out of these three motorhomes that we've got here, um, they're all kind of in various stages of needing work. So this is kind of the starting point of a lot of motorhomes that uh, you might see on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or, you know, advertise somewhere that can be a great deal, can be a great kind of inexpensive way to get a GMC motorhome, but just be aware of the work that's needed, what you're getting into, what you're going to have to do to, to actually make it into a motorhome that you could enjoy.